I'm too young to remember this, but I'm told there used to be a television show, black and white. It was entitled Wanted, Dead or Alive. It was starring Steve McQueen. It refers back to an old tradition among bounty hunters in the Wild West that when a criminal was wanted, sometimes the same reward was paid whether they were dead or alive. The truth is, God wants you, and he wants you dead, and he wants you alive. I'm not talking about waiting until you go to the cemetery. The passage of scripture we're going to be examining in this series talks about how we must experience a death to self and be alive in Christ Jesus. Let's look at the 8th verse of the 6th chapter. This is a continuation of the discussion that Paul started, talking about our death to self, baptism as burial, and resurrection. In verse 8, he writes, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died... He died to sin once and for all, but the life that he lived, and this is a constant idea, he lives to God in the same way. Verse 11 says, count yourselves dead to sin. If you have the King James Bible, it says, reckon yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now, there you have it, dead and alive. You are dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. Now, let's look at verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you may obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. A problem for a lot of people who name the name of Jesus as a Christian is there hasn't been a lot of growth in their Christian life. If I could put up a timeline, there'd be a point in time when you were B.C., before Christ, but then there's a point of conversion where you pass from death into life. The problem a lot of Christians have is they don't grow much beyond that point. There's no growth in grace, as the Bible calls it. They stay too close to the point of conversion. It's like the little boy I heard about who went to bed. After he'd been asleep for a few moments, he fell out of the bed. And his mother heard him crying, and she came in and picked him up and put him back in bed. And she said, honey, why'd you fall out of bed? And he said, well, I guess I stayed too close to where I got in. The problem with a lot of Christians is you're staying too close to where you first got into the Christian life and you're not moving on and growing. Now, all of this material here in the sixth chapter of Romans is about how you can live a victorious Christian life. In this series, I'd like to extract from this passage of Scripture six confessions. There are six things you must understand and acknowledge constantly in the Christian life if you're going to grow, if you're going to get beyond the place where you entered the Christian life. Here is affirmation confession number one. A healthy Christian must consistently confess, I am dead, I am dead to sin. That means also that I am dead to self. That's something you must acknowledge. I like what it says in verse 11. Count yourselves dead. The King James Version says reckon. That sounds like a Texan word. You can ask a Texan if they're doing okay, and they'll say, reckon so. In Texas, that means maybe perhaps, possibly. That's not what the word means here. It doesn't mean possibly or perhaps. It's an accounting word. It's where we get our word logic. It means to compute, to calculate, to consider, to estimate, to esteem something to be true. What that means is day after day, moment after moment, you must keep acknowledging, I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. Thank you, Lord for giving us tools and guidance on how to live the Christian life. Lord, you want us to grow. 
You don't want us to stay where we first got into the Christian life. You want us to grow. And I pray that as we move through these six things, these six confessions, that we would take them to heart and apply them to our lives daily. And that would produce growth in our life. In Jesus' name, Let there be light. Open the eyes of the blind. Purify our hearts in your fire.